from Pittsburgh's People's Media. Midnight Radio, WBRC. Live from Zoom Room B on the World Wide Web, you're listening to Bricolage's Midnight Radio. A remote education program connecting school curriculum with the creation of 1940-style radio plays. Whatever you're learning in school today, it's Midnight Radio. Students transform into radio plays. It's Midnight Radio. Performing sounds are what characters say. It's Midnight Radio. Bricolage is proud to present Midnight Radio. and the winds of New York City are buzzing with the energy of industrialization. Everywhere you look, machines are replacing manual labor as the main means of production, and thousands of people flood factories and mills as the need for workers skyrockets. 17-year-old Honor Barnes roams these bustling streets, homeless but hopeful for whatever opportunities might come her way in this dynamic city. She's lived on the streets for her entire life, an experience that gave her a sharp wit and a sharper tongue. Honor roams the city as storm clouds gather on the skyline. Honor becomes aware of a second set of footsteps behind her, echoing above the noise of the crowd. Who's that? It sounds like they're following me. But who would be following me? I'm definitely being followed. This isn't good at all. Honor Barnes, age 17, born in America. Did I get this all correct? Yes, that's me. But sir, if I may ask, how do you know me? Why do you know me? I clearly don't recognize you. Who I am shouldn't concern you, though who you are enlightens me. Now, if you wouldn't mind coming with me? Coming with you? I may be young, but I've been alive long enough not to trust the likes of you. You're wasting your time. Oh, whatever your name is. It's Chester. Chester? Okay, okay, listen. Now you know who I am, and I know who you are. I don't want anything from you. I'm just doing my job. You can trust me. I'm not falling for that. Goodbye, Chester. Wait! Honor! Perhaps this would interest you? What? What is that? It's like a... Tiny machine in the palm of my hand? Indeed it is. But how did you make it work? And where did you get it? And what does it do? It's simple, really. Just come with me. I'm gonna regret this, aren't I? I don't think so. Where are we headed? Cliff Street. The factory district? Wait, you're not just recruiting me for some factory job, are you? Because I've had plenty of this, and I'm not interested. I get by just fine with the odd jobs I have. No, not a factory job. Not a babysitting job either? I don't like kids. No, not a babysitting job. Well, what is this then? And why did you need me? All of your questions will be answered soon. I hope so. And then you'll have many more. Well, that's comforting. Now hurry up! The rain is picking up. Well, here we are. A factory? I said I didn't want a factory job, remember? It was like the first thing I said. Relax. This is no normal factory. And you're not here for a job. Uh, Chester, you're back, and I see you brought our guest of honor, so to speak. Yes, I did, just like you asked. Who are you? 
My name is Lewis, but most people call me Doc. I'm Honor. Honor Barnes. Oh, I know who you are. Who's that? Th that's Kulon. Kulon is mute. Mute? What's that mean? It means they don't speak. They can hear everything you say. They just can't say anything back. What kind of factory is this? I have never seen machines quite like this before. That's because th this is a factory like no other, Honor Barnes. What we make here is something that can't be found anywhere else on Earth. Okay, you've got me curious. Curiosity is a valuable trait. So you aren't going to tell me what you make here? Please don't make me guess. I hate guessing. I don't think I should tell you. I think I should show you. Here, take this blank paper and pencil. Now write down as much of your life story as you can fit onto that sheet of paper. You know how to write, don't you? Of course I do. I may be homeless, but I'm not illiterate. Well then, have at it. Done. Now what? Now show me the paper and let me look at it for three seconds. After three seconds, I'm going to give it back to you and don't let me see it again. Okay, here you go. All right, I'm done. Take the paper back. Now I'm going to recite everything you wrote down on that paper back to you, word for word. I guarantee you I won't miss a letter. What? That's impossible. Not for Doc, it isn't. All right, then let's see it. I was born 17 years ago last March to a woman named Frances Barnes. She lived long enough to name me Honor, but then passed away when I was only a week old. I spent my early years being passed from orphanage to orphanage before I decided to take control of my own destiny. I struck out on the street when I was just six years old, and I have never looked back. Whoa. Did I get it right? Yes, and that's a cute parlay trick, but I don't quite see what this has to do with the factory. What do you make here? Autobiographies? Not easily impressed, are we, Miss Barnes? It's going to take a little more than that. Kulon, come here, please. Kulon, I think it would be nice for you to say hello to Honor. Would you do that for me? But I thought you said Kulon was me. They can't talk. That's correct. Kulon cannot speak unless I put my hand around their neck like this. Hello, Honor. My name's Kenlon. Welcome to Cliff Street. How? How did you do that? How did Kulon do that? Their mouth didn't even open, but I heard the words clear as a bell. I think I need to sit down. See what I mean about all those questions, Honor? On Cliff Street, for every question you get answered, ten more pop up in its place. I understand your confusion, Honor, but trust me, there's actually a very simple explanation for all of this. Which is? Everyone here at Cliff Street has a very special ability, something beyond the scope of what a normal human being can do. Some might call it a superpower. That's a bit dramatic for my taste. I prefer to call them capabilities. For me, it's my photographic memory. I'm able to look at something once and memorize every detail for life. What about Chester? Chester can take any mechanism and bring it to life at will. Remember that device I showed you on the street? That was one of Doc's inventions. Whenever I hold it in the palm of my hand, I can make it stop or start whenever I want. And Kulon? You've already experienced Kulon's capability, though you didn't quite realize it. Earlier when you heard them speak and felt like you needed to sit down, that's because the sound of Kulon's voice makes any everyone who hears it instantly lethargic and sleepy. Watch, I'll place my hand on Kulon's throat and... Hello, Honor. I'm very happy that you're getting to know us and our capabilities. I hope to get to know you better as well. Well, she's out. Let her rest for a moment. She has quite a shock today, and it's only, get more, it's only going to get more intense. And now we pause our program for a word from our sponsor. Uh, it looks like it's going to be another night of tossing and turning. Again? Honey, you need some help. But I've tried everything out there. Pills, teas, mugs of warm milk, nothing works. But have you tried Kunlon? Kunlon? What's that? I think you mean, who's that? Kunlon, can you come here for a moment, please? Certainly. I'd love to be of some help to you. 
worked like a charm. Thanks, Kunlan. Do not take Kunlan if you're allergic to Kunlan or to any ingredients in Kunlan. Kunlan can cause headaches or dizziness, especially within the first few weeks of treatment. If unexplained or significant weight loss occurs, your doctor will decide if you should continue taking Kunlan. Do not take certain medicines when you're taking Kunlan, as they may decrease its effectiveness. Wow, Kunlan really works. That's for sure. Thanks, Thanks Kunlan. Kunlan. You're welcome. And now, back to our regularly scheduled program, already in progress. It all began with a spinning machine honor. A spinning machine at a textile mill where I worked as a young man. I made mere pennies in my job at the mill and it was clear to me that if I ever wanted to make something out of myself, I needed to get a spinning machine of my own and start my own mill. But how? I had no money and little means. But I was clever and I was determined. I had always been gifted with a good memory, so I memorized every part of the spinning machine while I worked. Day in and day out, I studied the parts and how they worked in my own free time. I began gathering and mismatching materials I could use to build my very own version. Every chance I got, I'd work on building my own machine in the band shed behind the workhouse where I slept. Then one day, during a terrible thunderstorm, a bolt of lightning hit the shed while I was assembling my machine and I was knocked back off my feet, entirely unconscious. When I came to, I realized I could still see the entire blueprint of the spinning machine in my head, clear as day. It was as if my brain had made an exact copy, and I could study it whenever I wanted. I tested my abilities elsewhere, and it became clear. I could memorize anything I laid my eyes upon. I knew my machine had given me these powers, so I waited until the next thunderstorm to see if I could make it happen again. Maybe I could give myself another new capability. Did it work? Not at all. It seemed the machine only worked that once. But then I thought, what if it only works one time per person? What if I could make it give someone else special powers? And that's when I found Kulon. They were just a terrified young orphan when I found them. But with my help, uh, they found their voice and their special capability. What about Chester? I was like you, Honor young and living alone on the streets. Doc found me hiding down by the docks, stealing food and clothes from the fishermen whenever they came in the port. It didn't take much convincing for me to abandon a life of poverty and homelessness to discover what powers Doc's machine had to offer me. Is that why you chose me? Because I'm homeless and have no family? That's precisely why. So you just scavenge the city for orphans and use us as experiments for your strange little machine? without even knowing what it will do to us. It might kill someone. Did you ever stop to think about that? I'm not forcing you to do anything, Honor. You're free to leave at any time. I seek out orphans because it's easier for them to become gifted with special powers without raising suspicions for friends and family. But you don't have to become one of us. You can go back to life on the streets, a life of uncertainty and strife. Or you can join our family here on Cliff Street and see what capabilities you might gain after a session with my machine. But why? Why are you doing this? Have you ever worked in a factory, Honor? Unfortunately, yes. And what was it like? Terrible. Being forced to work long hours under those dangerous conditions. If I hadn't left when I did, I'd be dead by the time I was 20. But what if you could change that, Honor? What if you could give the power back to the workers? What if I was able to use my machine to give people the capabilities to create new factories and new industries? Ones that didn't rely on breaking the backs of the working class. Don't you want to be a part of that, Honor? If I was to say yes, not that I'm saying yes, but if I was to say yes, what would happen next? Well, it seems like perfect weather for you to try out my machine. But what if your machine gives me a terrible power, something negative, or changes me in a way I don't like? That sounds like fear, Honor, and you don't seem like a fearful woman to me. You're right, I'm not. Well then? I'm in. Chester, ready the machine, please. So what do I have to do? Come place your hands on the machine, up here by the motor, and then we wait for Mother Nature to do the rest. Is it normal to immediately regret this decision? Because I'm immediately regretting this decision. Hold on, Honor. It won't be long now. Honor? Honor, can you hear me? How do you feel? I feel the same, I guess. I have a headache, but that's about it. Should I feel different? 
Not necessarily. You won't really know what you can do until it just sort of happens. This headache is pretty intense. I kind of wish I was alone right now. I just want it to be quiet. Wait, where did everyone go? Doc? Chester? Kunlon? What happened? Come back! You're back, but where did you go? You were here and then you just disappeared. How is that possible? What did you say before we disappeared on her? How did you feel? I said I wished I was alone because my head was aching and then, poof, you were gone. I think you found your capability. I can make people disappear? Hold my pocket watch in your hand on her. What do you see? I see you as a young man. You're working in a factory. Wow, you had a lot more hair back then. Just as I thought. Psychokinesis and psychometry. What and what? Those are your abilities, Honor. Psychokinesis is the ability to move people and objects with your thoughts alone. That's how you made us disappear. In psychometry, that's the ability to see information about a person by touching inanimate objects associated with them. You mean I'm one of you now? I really do have special abilities? Yes, you do. We're your new family, Honor. We'll protect you, and you'll protect us. So, what's next? Now, we change the world. What does Honor's future hold? How will she use her new abilities? What's next for our brave heroine and her newfound family of supernatural siblings on Cliff Street? Tune in next week to find out.